Here we have an example of the arc sine of the sine of negative 11 pi over 2. So let me write that a little cleaner for you. So arc sine, you remember, that's just inverse sine. It's another way of saying inverse sine of the sine of negative, negative 11 pi over 2. So inverse sine of sine of negative 11 pi over 2. Okay, so how do we, how do, we do this? Well, let's, uh, again, we'd, we'd like to, we'd like to just cancel these out because they're inverse trig functions and just say the answer is negative 11 pi over 2, done. But we can't always do that, right? We have, there are certain times when we can, certain times when we can't. Basically, what we've learned is you can if this is in the limited domain, but you must first determine if that's an angle or an answer, and that depends where it's sitting. It's sitting inside of sine, so it's an angle. Let me go back and show you the exact notes. So looking at the notes here, so here's the notes I've sent you. Um, composition of the same inverse and regular function. That's what we have. We have the same. We have sine inverse and sine of whatever our angle. Oh, well, it's an angle. <laughs> I'm just telling you what it is. Um, right? It's the same. It's, it, it, in a minute, well, in, in some of the problems to come, we will do a mix. We'll have like cosine inverse of sine. You know, we'll have different trig functions, cosine and sine. But now we have two of the same. So that's what this section is about, same, sine and sine inverse. So, and what, what, we, what do we do? Well, step one, figure out if it's an angle or an answer. And that has to do with where it sits, right? Remember that we plug angles into sine cosine tangents, so that's the first thing. And then figure out if it fits in the limited domains. So let's go back and do that. So it's got to be an oops, let me write. It's got to be an angle because it's inside of a normal sine, right? For normal sine functions, we plug in angles, get out answers. For inverse sine functions, we plug in answers, get out angles, don't we? So keeping that in mind, this is inside of sine, it's got to be an angle. Okay, so if it's an angle, what, that's step one. Step two, what's the limited domain for angles for sine? So for sine of an angle, the angle has to be what? Remember, it's uh, for sine, it's got to be um, in the first and fourth quadrants, right? Between negative 90 or negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Is it? No way. Negative 11 pi over 2, right? If you did a number line, oops, did a number line over here, and you had pi over 2 and 0 in the middle and negative pi over 2, right? It's supposed to be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Negative 11 pi over 2 would be way over here to the left, wouldn't it? I mean, I'm not even going nearly far enough. So it's, it's not between them, right? It's not, it's not, it's outside. It's outside of the domain, of the limited domain. Okay, so if it's out, so, so if it was inside, if it was inside, then we could just cancel these out and say the answer is a negative 11 pi over 2, but it's not inside, it's outside. Let's go back to our notes and see what we do. So, um, so there it is, there's sine of an angle, it's got to be between negative, two and, between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So, step 3, if it is within... It's, then you'd cancel. Step four, if it is outside and it is an answer. Was it an answer? No, it was an angle. So we're down to step five. If it is outside of the limited domain and it's an angle. All right, here we are. Then we cannot just cancel, but there will still be an answer. It will not be D and E. It, it is not D and E because it's an angle. And no matter how big an angle is or how small, we can always add or subtract two pi full rotation until we find where it is on the unit circle. We must work out the problem starting on the inside. So if you have sine inverse to sine, so we have, B 
because this is an angle, it's outside, but it is not within the limited domain. It is, in, it is inside a sign, but it is not within the limited domain. Therefore, we subtract 2 pi. So you start, you start on the inside doing the inside problem. And you can just add or subtract 2 pi's because angles, it's all, we're just going around that unit circle, aren't we? So then we jump down to step 5, and we're going to do the um, inside. So we have the sine inverse of the sine of negative 11 pi over 2. So start with this inside, this inside problem first. So I'm just going to find what is the sign of negative 11 pi over 2. Well, like we said, um, sines and cosines and all that, that's just on the unit circle. So if we want to find negative 11 pi over 2, we can just add, we can just add 2 pi. Right? We can always add a full rotation, and you'll be back in the same place. Remember that thinking, right? So if you're on the unit circle, you're at some spot, you can always add a full rotation, you'll still be at the same spot. So we can add 2 pi, but 2 pi, common denominator, we're going to have to multiply top and bottom by 2, so that'll become 4 pi over 2. So if we add 4 pi over 2, we get negative 7 pi over 2, and we're going to have to do it again. In fact, you can tell we're going to have to add it twice, aren't we, to make it positive. So negative 7 plus 8 is plus 1 pi over 2. So now we've actually added 3, 1, 2, 3 full rotations, but you can add full rotations all you want, and you're still back in the same place. So negative 11 pi over 2 is the same, this is the same spot. What do they call it? They call it co-terminal, meaning it ends in the same spot. So this problem becomes sine of positive 1 pi over 2. If you can read my scribbles here. Positive 1 pi over 2. It's the exact same ending spot as negative 11 pi over 2. I just added 3, 1, 2, 3 full rotations. So this is the same spot on the unit circle. So now let's go to the unit circle and find the sine of pi over 2. You might know it already. It's 1. Let's go take a look. So, so back up here, the unit circle, which is all scribbled all over here. So, oh, oh, oh that was good scribbling, wasn't it? That was tangent. I shouldn't erase all that. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, let's come here. So here's pi over 2. Cosine sine. Sine is 1. There we go. So back to the problem we go. So the inside, the sine of pi over 2 just equals 1. So this problem, bringing this part down, becomes the sine inverse of, and that whole inside has become 1. Are you tracking with me? So we did the inside problem. We did the sine of negative 11 pi over 2 by finding, by adding three full rotations to negative 11 pi over 2, we're working out the inside problem. It became the same spot as positive 1 pi over 2, and the sine of positive 1 pi over 2 is 1 on the unit circle. So now the question becomes, what's the sine inverse of 1? Now remember, that means this is an answer, and we're looking for the angle, right? We put answers into sine inverse. We put angles into regular sine, we put answers into sine inverse, and we're looking for the angle whose sine is 1. Let's go to the unit circle. So coming back, um, the angle whose sine is 1. Well, that's right here, right? That, that's the same angle. It is pi over 2. That's the angle whose sine is 1. That's the angle... Whose sine is 1. All right, so back we go. The angle whose sine is 1, pi over 2. There we go. That's how we do that problem. So the moral of the story is, if the inside is not in the limit, first off, figure out that it's an angle because it's inside of sine. It's not an answer. Check the limited domain. It was outside, so we can't just cancel those guys out. The answer was not just negative 11 pi over 2, was it? It was not the right answer. We couldn't do that. 
because it was outside the limited domain. So instead, we worked out the problem from the inside out. We did the inside here. To do the inside, we added a bunch of rotations till we got the same spot, found out the sine is 1, the inside became 1, the sine inverse of 1, the angle whose sine is 1, pi over 2.